Hey everybody and welcome to the One Single Story Podcast. Unfortunately, we don't have any video footage from today uh, because of a production issue, but we still have the audio, so stick around, listen to the podcast, and while you're here anyways, why not a joke? Who was the best babysitter in the Bible? David, because he rocked Goliath to sleep. All right, let's get started. Welcome to today's edition of One Single Story. One Single Story is a ministry of Open Door Church. We're located in Northeastern North Carolina. One Single Story podcast is a conversation with pastors from Open Door about a passage from the Chronological Bible. Our church is reading through the Chronological Bible this year, and this podcast is a resource for that reading. I'm Stephen Mazzell, and I'm the lead pastor here at Open Door. Today, I'm joined by our Bertie Campus pastor, Jay Rivenbark, and our Edenton Campus youth pastor, Zach Unkenholtz. Let's join the conversation as we talk about a passage from today's reading. Welcome to One Single Story, March the 8th edition. And today the reading comes from Numbers 31, uh, verses 1 through 24. That's what we're going to talk about today. Let me read a couple of verses here and then we will um, have a conversation. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, On behalf of the people of Israel, take revenge on the Midianites for leading them into idolatry. After that, you will die and join your ancestors. So Moses said to the people, choose men and arm them to fight the Lord's revenge against Midian. So um, first, he says, on behalf of the people of Israel, take revenge on the Midianites for leading them into idolatry. We've had some conversations already about idolatry. Um, This is the cause of, of what God's wanting to do here. Here he says that the Midianites led the Israelites into idolatry. It was a, they went from point A to point B. It wasn't, they were one day and the next day they're not. Uh, it was, it was a process. So I think that's true of anything in our life that becomes an idol. It's a process. What is the process of something becoming an idol in our life? What does that look like? I think it is very systematic. It, it's slow. Um, I think if we recognize that, oh, this is this is now an idol to me, or it's about to be an idol, then I think we perhaps change the way we view things, respond to it, et cetera. But uh, little by little, when it takes over, it becomes our priority to the point of it is an idol. Um, it is there and as it relates to this issue and the issue of being drawn away from the things of God. I think it's typically it is slow and systematic. Uh, and perhaps we don't even realize we've crossed the line until after the fact. I think, uh, as we talked about in a previous podcast, how we as Christians should be surrounding ourselves with things that remind us of what Christ has done for us, right? And it's one of the reasons why we go to church. In the same manner, many times, if we surround ourselves with things that we can idolize in some ways, that they can become, they can become idols for us. Um it's kind of like the thing with the cigarettes. Like one cigarette does not start. One cigarette will not make you addicted to cigarettes, but it's the start of something, right? And so um, that's the thing is that like when we continue to surround ourselves with things and continue to do something over and over and over again, it creates patterns, and ultimately that can lead us into either becoming addicted to things or it can lead us to making our lives about something that is not what God has intended for us, but doesn't usually just start. And it doesn't, typically we don't just like all of a sudden start worshiping something in our lives. It's a slow, it's a slow burn. If if that were the case, we would typically probably resist it. You know, Mm -hmm. we'd see it coming on the onset and we say, no, that's not right. Stay away from that. But that's not usually the way it works. Yeah, Andy Stanley has a book called uh, The Principle of the Path and basically says the, the destination is always the same. The path goes to the same place every single time. But we just don't arrive at that destination for a while, so we think we're exempt. You know, if you, you we're our church is located close to Highway U.S. Highway 17. If you get on Highway 17, it will eventually take you to Elizabeth City. You're going to go th- a, 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 a while before you get to Elizabeth City, and you you can say, "I'm not in Elizabeth City. I'm not in Elizabeth City. I'm not in Elizabeth City." But if you stay on 17 long enough, guess what? You're going to be in Elizabeth City. And I think the same is true. As we walk down those pathways, we don't wake up. We're not translated from here to Elizabeth City. We start down that path and we can justify our actions by saying we are not here. We're not Mm -hmm. doing this. 
But eventually, we continue down that path. It's going to lead us there. That's right. We we eventually end up there, and and so anything can become an idol. Literally, anything can become an idol. Mm-hmm. Not, there's there's nothing outside of. And so it, he he gets these men together and, and the 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 warriors together to go out to fight. There's something I I didn't make a note about that I do want to address before I talk about that. It says. For Moses to do to do this, and after that you're gonna die. Yep. Yeah, this is your yep. this is your last hurrah. And he's yeah. just like, so, yes! yeah, yeah, it's finally. <laughs> so, I've been asking for this for so long, you know. Yeah, or if he wasn't ready to check out, he would like, okay, we'll do this next month. Right, yeah. we're gonna hold on. Yeah, Wait. we got some training to do. That's right. We need to yeah. we need to go do some some work in the mm-hmm. wilderness. Uh, but he, he chooses the men, and and they go out and 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 fight. And they kill the Midianite men, but they don't kill the women and children. And they keep all of the stuff and all of the women. And this really is, sets off a, a problem. It says, but Moses was furious with all the generals and captains who had returned to battle. Why have you let all the women live? These are the very ones who followed Balaam's advice and caused the people of Israel to rebel against the Lord at Mount Peor. They are the ones who caused the plague to strike the Lord's people. So kill all the boys and all the women who have had intercourse with a man. So they were supposed to kill them all. That was the first commandment. And then they didn't. Mm -hmm. And he's mad about it. You know, he's like, these are the very people that have caused the problem. They partially obeyed. Mm -hmm. They killed the men, but they didn't fully obey. Mm -hmm. One is partial obedience, disobedience, and is partial obedience worse than disobedience. I think the obvious answer is partial obedience is disobedience. We dress it up, um, but it is. I did all I could. Yes. Yeah, I'm doing all I can. You That's know, what we say things know, like that. But, you know, Saul did the same thing. King right. King Saul um, made the same mistake, used the same. He even, he even put a religious spin on it. You know, he said, I spared, I spared the best of what they had so we could sacrifice to the Lord when they were told to destroy everything they had. And so, yes, I, it is disobedience, uh, and it can lead to worse consequences sometimes, at least when you are outright defiant. You know where a person stands, and uh, that can you can ignore them, leave them alone, or, or there's repercussions. Partial disobedience, I think that is what we see in our own lives on a regular basis, or at least a struggle yeah. with, with it. Mm-hmm. I think in terms of that, I was thinking back to the vows and how we talk about wedding vows and things like that and how um, if you've made a vow to like a wife and uh, to your wife and then you are, you know, if you've made that vow, and you're supposed to keep to it and you, and you should be obedient to your wife and you should, you should keep that vow to her. But if you are also with someone else at the same time, is that worse than just not being with her at all? I would say absolutely. I think you shouldn't have made that vow in the first place. I mean, that's even if you're being partially obedient. Oh, I'm still like paying for things, and I still <laughs> stay with you, and we still are well, together. You're be paying for things. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like yeah. I would say it's much worse. I mean, that's one example, but I think it's it's much worse to be partially obedient when the 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 least it, that it requires is being fully obedient. I think in that. Yeah. So I I think the struggle between partial obedience and just complete disobedience is. Partial obedience, we make excuses for. Disobedience, you know, we're just like, there's no excuse. Yeah, forget yeah. you, yeah. you know, whatever. And and you know, we we try to we tolerate partial obedience, mm-hmm. and we get frustrated with disobedience. And I'm not sure I understand why. You know, I would rather know what I'm dealing with mm-hmm. than to wonder. Okay, so are are you going to be? Are you going to honor it today? Or are you not? Are you going to do what you're supposed to today? Right. Or are you not? And it, it can be somewhat, somewhat frustrating. Now, I don't think the original intent was for them to leave anyone, but in the end, they do. Are there times when grace is extended and we are allowed to keep what was forbidden, but there are consequences that or long last. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> uh, I, I got to hear an example. For this. <laughs> I can give you some examples. I'll, I'll give you one. one. I'm curious. Yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the danger of doing this in a podcast is that I, I got minutes to dispel yeah. years of information. 
and most of the people here that will listen to this, the majority of them are going to have some understanding of what I'm going to say. If you haven't, uh, if, like if this is news to you and you're going, oh, mm-hmm. I've been listening to these idiots, you know, mm-hmm. then I'm sorry. You know, you can you can catch up on the story at, at a different place. There's books written about it. So that's what I would say. Um, so I've been divorced and remarried. That's a disobedient. God's grace allows me to serve, but there are consequences sure. that come along with it. That's mm-hmm. So that's the best example I can give is that God doesn't always force you to go back and cor- correct it. His grace allows you to live with the choices you've made. But along with that are consequences that right. come come with that. And in this passage, Moses says, all right, you can go take care of these. You can keep these. Yeah, it's almost like a concession. That's right. Yeah. But understand they have the full cap- he doesn't say it like this, but they have the full capability of leading you right down the same path. Yeah, that that the other people did absolutely because I mean that that's the culture they came from. They were indoctrinated in, so they already had that propensity, um, you know, to serve these other little g gods, as it were, and, and to lead them astray. And yet, this concession literally gives them over to be, you know, part of their family, as it were, to become that's right. Marry them. them. That's right. Yes, when you've got that, and so it it's like you're just you're dumping all of this poison into this mix as it were and and going to bake it as it were and and hope for the best and like it's going to turn out to be a good product uh, when in fact you know the, the likelihood of that long term is is not very good you know, it can it can but it also can be very yeah yeah and and so i gosh i don't want to go down a rabbit hole here uh too too far but sometimes People will see something in your life that God extended grace to, and you mm-hmm. were able to move on. Yeah. And they think, okay, I can oh, do that. And absolutely. they come expecting, yeah. you know, you to say, yeah, you yeah, can do that. Yeah, pronounce your blessings on and, it. And, and I'm like, and, oh, yeah. heck no. Because like, no, my story is no going to turn out as good or better than yours. Right, that's yours right. Did, so therefore, yeah, give me a pass on That's this. right. And, you know, so there's no doubt that there were some families who took in some Midianite women, married them, had children, yeah. and they were blessed. But there's a hundred percent chance some of them That's right. married some of those Midianite women, and they had they, they turned to idolatry, right. and turned them away from God, and 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 we can't just blind our way to mm-hmm. say only the good things. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, yep. Is that a good enough example for you? Say? That's a great example. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the 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 last part of it starts talking about um, purification. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 they had clearly disobeyed. They had come back from war. And God and, and, and Moses tells them, everything's got to be purified. Your clothes, your house, the stuff, even the plunder that you brought back, it's got to be purified. Mm-hmm. Is there a process after disobedience of purification in our lives and our families, even physical, physical, you know, purification? Um, are are those things still a reality today, or is it just as simple as saying, "Okay, God, I'm sorry," and moving on to the next thing? I'll give a great example of this. Right. So when I would lie as a kid, did you guys ever get the soap in the mouth? Did you ever get that? Yeah. I'm threatened with it. Huh? <laughs> threatened I, no, I've it. been threatened with it. I don't know if I've ever, no. I don't no. recall ever oh. having soap in my mouth. I've got it at least two dozen times that mm. I can remember. <laughs> but I, I was pretty bad when I was a kid. But so I would get soap in the mouth. And while, yes, the soap doesn't actually It's a shame up. that we're sitting here with a table full of liars. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> but we grow. Uh, so, but uh, but that's the thing is when I was a kid, I remember that, and I can still remember that, and I remember ex- the specific reason why I got soap in the mouth. It was always because I lied, and that was like the what I had to do. And it was like, and while yes, putting soap in your mouth just for anyone at home, that does not actually make you not a liar. You know, that's not what like actually cleans you. But the idea of that a physical way to remind myself, and even to this day, I'm like. I still put soap in my mouth whenever I lie. Just joking. I don't do that. Is that <laughs> why you're blowing bubbles, bubbles <laughs> when you came in? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why that was. If y'all see, if Zach preaches like and he starts machine. going bloop, 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 <laughs> like, oh, he's lying. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. It's like Pinocchio. It's like, where well, the bubbles are going? Yeah. That's the bubbles. Yeah, oh, that's a, there, see, there's a new, mm, new story you could tell. Yes, that's good. <laughs> but with that, you know, even though, yes, it doesn't, clean you of that sin but it's a reminder of like what you did what you've done it's an example of that and i think even yes even though like when you said like i mean some people might feel dirty to take a shower or something like that but 
there is a there is a process of cleaning that is required. I mean, we're told in Scripture that you know the salvation comes through putting our faith in Christ, and what else it is through Christ alone, but also by confessing our sins. We need to confess our sins, and when we sin, we should be apologetic to God. We should come to Christ with with any of our sins. Um, even if you forget to like, if you if you're like on your deathbed, and you're like, oh man, I forgot to. I, I forgot to ask God for forgiveness for this specific sin. You're forgiven for all those sins, but we are still co- called to come to Christ and to to repent. And I think it's an important thing that we we do that. And sometimes maybe a physical reminder is a good thing, uh, but more important than that is being purified through Christ. Yeah, I think this very clearly points out that we have a responsibility in our lives when we disobey, whether it be completely or partially then we make things right with God, that, that we recommit, rededicate not only our life, but every aspect of our life back to Him. And it's like getting that fresh new start uh, so that we can serve. Because these instruments that He talks about, the purification, are going to be used in, in service. Yeah, and and sometimes their, their uh, purification is about physical things. It's not even always things that are wrong. They are just um, impediments hindrances you know I've, I've thought through at times things that i i, I needed to get rid of or uh, shouldn't listen to or whatever you know because they become impediments you know because they they hinder the the purity uh, that god's trying to to work mm-hmm. through in my life and what he's wanting to accomplish so let's uh let's close in prayer today pastor jay you mind closing us in prayer sure Lord, uh, we thank you again for your word and uh, for the challenge that we live pleasing to you uh, for the things that we have allowed in the times that we have either disobeyed directly or we have obeyed partially, which is disobedience. We confess that and ask for your forgiveness. And we recommit ourselves to you in every aspect of our lives so that we'll be pleasing and honorable and acceptable unto you and that we'll be effective for your kingdom. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for the One Single Story Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast and leave us a review on whatever platform you're listening on. To stay up to date with everything that is going on with One Single Story, visit onesinglestory.com for all of the resources we have available. We look forward to you joining us again tomorrow.